get on what's going on in the markets today because uh well i'm going to see the word of the day actually is they are looking to bust the system pretty hard i think it's not just a matter of they're losing control i think they're losing control on purpose remember that and i'm going to address something with uh, peter schiff said right away he thinks bernanke's going to come out with qe oh i think he is eventually but first you got to have really screwed up problems first and see where people demand it and maybe it comes on the next person for QE maybe because you figure if QE starts you know getting added on and they're doing more bond buying or whatever the hell it is in uh, say September oh well, Bernanke's only got a few more months to go basically he's out the door you know he's out the door he's out he's got like six months to go as it is right so you know I think he's going to I think they're going to let this stuff go down a lot harder. I know, like, traders have been saying about the S&P that that was a, maybe a, they're worried it was a false breakout. I said, and no kidding. <laughs> Actually, I think, you know, when this stuff is dropping like this, it could drop further. Even though, fundamentally, silver should be nowhere near this price, it could drop further. Now, I want to point out something else about the premiums on the coins. You know, people look at the premiums and they say it's a $2 premium, a $3 premium. A lot of times it's $5 premiums on the coins, like with a uh, case of, like, uh, Canadian maple leaves. And they'll say, well, yeah, it used to be, well, it went up a couple bucks. But you remember, that's a $5 premium on a coin that's under 20 bucks spot price now. So, ergo, that's a 25% premium. 25% premium. So, in other words, if you were spending $5,000 on coins back when it was $40 an ounce and you had uh, you know a $4 premium on a coin that was a 10% premium right so if you got $5,000 you paid 10% premium on for the coins over the spot but now if you spent $5,000 yeah I get twice the coins but you're you're actually putting out a, you're actually spending a 25% premium cuz like I think when it was like say 40 bucks I think the coins that were like Canadian Maple Leafs were only going for like two or three dollar premium. Now they're going for like a five dollar premium, and it's not like it says when you're saying it's half the price and the premium is twice as high. In effect, the premium is four times higher percentage wise. Now that's not like an extreme amount like where some of the people are dealing. You know, talk about physical silver. You know. Physical silver is going to go to like 100 and the spot price is just going to be some other bullshit over here, you know. It's not that extreme, but it's showing that it's, uh, it's you know, it's almost like the black market reality, you know. <laughs> you, want this, you want the real stuff or you want paper. But, uh, you know, in the paper markets, you know, I'm going to tell you this. I'm beginning to wonder if they're, I really do think they're trying to bust a system on purpose, this is like a, col a, a collapse on purpose. That's what I'm saying. But I, it's not going to be the collapse coming up here. I don't want to say that. Ben Bernanke is going to do QE, but it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a couple months or so. See, I, I think Shift is talking, Peter Shift is talking about he's going to do QE right away. And that's why I don't like Shift too much, because I think he's basically selling books or some shit. And he's a broker. <laughs> He's one of those guys I always see that I don't like too much that actually is chasing money. You know, you got, how much your portfolio is it over 200, 200,000? Is it 2 million? Oh, oh, good. I need you as my client, you know. And, uh, you know, I, but I think uh, my devil sense tells me that Bernanke's not going to say nothing about QE for at least a couple months. Trust my devil sense, okay? I mean, I think it's actually pretty good. And actually, I think the guy like some, you know, there's Dr. Doom, right? Doctor, I want to get a flip onto something here. Dr. Doom, you got um, Mark Farber, the original one. And you got the second number, little little Dr. Doom. Norio Rimbini comes on board later. I don't think he's a true Dr. Doom. Actually, to tell you the truth, I think he's more of an insider than, than Mark Farber. I think Norio Rimbini actually is a more of an insider than Mark Farber. I think Rubini pretty much knew this deal was going to be coming up. It's my guess. But it's based upon other things I don't want to talk about on the Internet. Um, but, uh, so, like, when he's telling you to stay in cash, I don't think that's going to be a smart thing, even this year. You know? But I think it's going to take 
after the summer or like late summer, everything's going to start turning around. Because all they have to do is have the rumor of QE and things fly up. Ben Bernanke actually dictates the markets. I don't think he quite expected things were going to go this radical. But there's absolutely no choice now. They're going to have to go with Super QE. Now, the other big thing, actually, there's a lot of stuff here, but I'm going to try to give it to you. Um, and actually, if I took a guess now, I think silver is going to go, even though it shouldn't go this low, even though they're going to lose money, even on just the plain bare bones operating costs of the mines, it could go lower. It could go lower. Because the electronic markets are a bunch of paper leverage garbage. It has nothing to do with real supply and demand, somebody buying something and, you know, I need it and I have to have it. And the miners, like, you know, got to pay for fuel to freaking get this, you know, and all the other expenses to actually get the stuff out of the ground. It has nothing to do with real supply and demand. It has to do with, you know, the casino bet betting system. So it could actually go lower. I'm going to say that because the way it looks right now. Now, I know 1819 is a major, major, major freaking super support. So it's right in that area too. But I don't know what they're trying to do right now. And I'm, expect, I'm kind of suspecting they're trying to bust the system and create a liquidity crunch. Now, something else I want to talk about because I think... Um, with the 10-year treasuries, <clears throat> they've been uh, spiking up in the interest rates. And actually, the 50-day moving average is the chart. The 50-day moving average, actually, they busted right through the 50-day moving average, worse than they've ever done in more than five decades, more than 50 years. So this is a hell of a stellar move. When you're just saying the interest rate went up to this interest, it's not just that. It's the acceleration of the rate. In other words, it busted through that 50 through 50 day moving average like butter. So it's it's like a crisis situation basically. Now, what's telling you is that if the interest rates on all the government debt throughout the world say started going up, well, the governments would all go broke because they couldn't pay the interest because they're so far in debt, and. Actually, that affects all the businesses, too, because when LIBOR goes up, Schreiber goes up, and uh, Prime goes up, that's how the loans and the businesses are basically in the loan documents. They'll say it's LIBOR plus this, Prime plus this. So it'll raise the interest rates on every business loan out there, and they'll have to tighten up. So, you know, that, see, a lot of people don't realize what goes on when they say the liquidity crunch. That kills everything. Interest rates go up. It's like all these businesses, and they all have loans. It's not like that loan is, you know, like, you know, when you do your home, you say it's the fixed rate. and it, They don't usually have fixed rates. They got LIBOR plus or prime plus. That's usually what the commercial sector has. So if these interest rates spike up really fast, you're going to kill everything and create a super liquidity crunch, which that goes right back to, you know, what are the elite trying to do per Lindsay? You know, I'm going to say it's per the guy that Lindsay Williams talks to. I think it's pretty obvious he's correct because I see the logic behind it. They're trying to create <clears throat> as much debt as possible to squeeze, you know, the assets out of everybody into their hands. <laughs> so that's what they're doing. And the only thing that keeps going where you have to make payments on stuff and screws you is like, you know, the federal government, taxes, regulations. Also, you have Obamacare, with that'll cost money. The, um, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. The medical, medical people with their snake oil stuff that they do. You know, they're cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So they keep those wheels of debt, you know, revenue going into those bureaucratic entities all the time. At the same time, uh, they create a major liquidity crunch. So, uh, you know, it looks like just, you know, they're going to have to, what they're going to do to react to this is super QE. Super QE. But I don't think it's going to come about within a week or two weeks or whatever. So silver could fall more. I don't know. I think it is going to fall more now that it's been dropping like this. And, it, and I don't, because I don't think Ben Bernanke is going to open his mouth for a couple months. He's out the door anyway. You know? He's probably going to wait a couple months. And in the meantime, 
you know, guys that I think there's people that knew this was coming up, to tell you the truth. I think Rubini knew. I don't know. I mean, I'm just playing it on a hunch, but considering how I think I know other things, I think he's the type of guy. I don't think Faber knew this was going to come about exactly. <laughs> I think Rubini's on the inside, man. Those are two different Dr. Dooms completely. And, uh, you know, um, the other thing is with China, they got the shadow banking system. And China wants to um, <clears throat> basically, you know, minimize the shadow banking system. They don't like it, basically, because they say it creates bubbles unexpectedly they can't control, which makes sense. But I'll say this. Why does China have this big, large shadow banking system? Why? The real answer is actually really simple. It's because they got such a rigid, family-linked, elite, state-owned, you know, economy that only loans go out to connected people. So therefore, people that aren't connected look for other ways to get the money to do their ventures and projects. So they got a lot of they got a lot of like elite control even more so in China than they do in the United States. That's why there's such a large shadow banking system. And they're trying to like tighten up credit a little bit to actually minimize it. But I don't know, that might be backfiring, you know. But it looks like in the short let's say like the next couple months, I think the silver and the metals are going to look shitty all summer. They usually do. And then they start taking off, say, in August or late August and stuff like that. That's what I think is going to happen. When Schiff started talking about, uh, Peter Schiff, he started talking about Ben Bernanke, you know, having to announce QE now that he shows that it didn't work. That's true in principle, but that's not going to be what's going to happen over the next few weeks. I don't know where silver can go, but it can go even worse electronically than you think. But... I don't know about the premiums that are going to be charged. They seem to be creeping up. Actually, I'm going to wait a little bit on buying coins because I think it might even go lower. And I'm not somebody I realize, you know, i got enough stash of silver as it is. You know, I don't need to say, you know, I don't buy it into this crap, buy on the dips all the time. i got enough stash of silver as it is. But um, I'll probably buy more because I, later, I, I think I'm going to wait a little bit because it's not critical for me. You know, to buy more silver. Because uh, I got a lot of metals. And uh, so, because I'm, su I'm suspecting it's going to drop a little more. But the, the premiums might creep up a little bit more, too. So, you know, a big major line in the sand is going to be the 18, 18 mark. Now, if it, if it goes below that... I don't think you're going to be able to buy the physical stuff that cheap, to tell you the truth. You might be able, you know, you'll always be able to buy it electronically. But I don't also say this. People have tunnel vision with silver. Uh, there's a lot of investments out there that go up like crazy. Like, for instance, I pointed out that Ruger Firearms, if you would have bought that in January of 2011, even when silver was 30 bucks, and you thought silver was, and it went up, silver went up to 47 if you bought the stock ticker Ruger Firearms, you would have been doing way better today. Way better. And there actually there was some hemp stocks out there. One of them actually went from, uh, oh, it was actually <laughs> under a dollar a lot of times. And somehow it exploded to $200 a share, believe it or not. It went up 200 times and settled back down to 40 And I think it settled back a little bit more. And I think it was Medibox or something. And... So there's a lot of other investments out there. I don't like people getting tunnel vision on silver like it's an investment investment. The Mark Faber strategy, where he's afraid that there's going to be a catastrophic collapse, I think that's correct. Because let me point out this. If these interest rates spike, first off, they are spiking. Like and I said, they're going up at a, at a rate of acceleration extremely fast. In other words, in, in the acceleration in the way it broke through the 50-day moving average was something it hasn't done in over five decades. So it's not just a matter of the absolute percentage. Percentage. It's like how fast it was spiking up. 
they either have to get on with hard, hard QE, more buying, buying, quantitative easing, and all that kind of stuff, or if the interest rates throughout the world start going up, the government's going to go broke. It's too early for them to go broke. Too early. But the thing is, if the governments go broke, you know what happens? Look back at uh, late summer 2011 when we had a deep downgrade of the, uh, by the S&P of the U.S. debt from AAA to AA. That's when gold spiked over $1,900 an ounce. That's when the markets went down and gold went up. So, you know, this scenario is coming up here. This scenario is coming up. Actually, at the end, it's going to come up really big. But here's the problem. And Mark Farber, I'll mention this guy again because he's right on the money. I, I like this guy because he thinks this. He, I basically, I see exactly what the hell he's talking about. They're, they're going to put out excise, excise taxes on gold exchange. They're going to freaking say, you know, if you have this much gold, it's going to be taxed at this. If you bring it to the bullion dealer, if you have bullion, it's going to have an extra tax on it versus an electronic market. They'll probably they'll do all kinds of stuff because the majority will vote that into existence. So that's another reason about when this stuff goes up. You don't want to sell it in pieces. You don't want to sell it like try to sell it all and guess sell at the bottom at the very top. You know what I mean? It's, dump the whole bottom out at the very, you know, just unload it all at once at the very top, you're not going to be able to hit it. But I know what's going to happen. They're going to have a gazillion rules coming up if it gets that high. They always do. If you look back historically, look even when oil went up a lot during the uh, Iran-Iraq um, war during the late 70s. Excise tax. Excise tax. So, uh, I don't know. I'll give you the. I, I'm going to say this for short term. 18 is a really super strong, uh, solid point on the silver. I, we all know this. It could go even lower electronically in the short term, depending on what Bernanke does. Totally depends on him. Totally. Doesn't depend on, you know, how much the mines are losing money or not. Now, as far as premiums on the physical coins, you probably won't see that kind of drop. Because like I said, like back when it was 40 maples were going for maybe 2 or $3. You can get them that low, 2 or $3 over spot, or maybe even less, $2 over spot, which represented like a 5% over spot, right? Now, they're like 5 bucks over spot, which represents 25% over spot. So, you know, if silver broke through 18, I think the coins might be going for 7 or $8 over spot. So, in effect, it's not going to really break through 18 um, in a real way. You see what I'm saying? See, I, I think people would talk about the separation between physical and electronic, you know, that are in the physical silver crowd. They exaggerate, but it's not actually uh, a bogus thing. Uh, theory, hypothesis, or whatever you want to call it, it, it do, the premiums do creep up as the price drops too, too low. It, they do start to creep up. So, uh, you know, if it does go below 18, I don't know if you're going to be able to get it cheaper physically. So, we shall see. Anyway, um, just hang on, because I think this is going to be a long summer. And, uh, you know, Bernanke... He's out the door, so I think towards the end of the summer is when you hear about the QE. And, you know, well, you might be shocked on how fast it goes up. But, you know, the whole deal can change, too, if there's a problem with, you know, government debt. Because this interest rates thing is a big, big, big deal. If the government can't meet its obligations or it's like having, you know, or it looks like the debt is not uh, as stellar or it's not double A anymore, or Moody's decides to downgrade the U.S. debt, you're going to see the markets go like this, and gold go like that. That's exactly what happened at the um, in August and September, early September of 2011. That's exactly what happened, so just keep that in mind.